Anna Brosti here, Traveling Jewels. This week I'm exploring colorful Colorado and seeing some unforgettable places. Step back in time and retrace the world famous Santa Fe Trail. And take in the beauty of the canyons and plains in Southeast Colorado. You can see real dino tracks, giant. It's all right here near Lamar and La Junta. First stop, one of Colorado's National Historic Sites. Welcome to Ben's Old Fort, welcome to 1846. This fort was a key stop along the Santa Fe Trail. Shopping this way, travel that way, life is good. This is a reconstructed adobe fur trading post. It's like being in a living museum. What's cool is you can walk around on your own or you can take a guided tour. It's a really fun place to explore. Where should we begin? This way, this way. So Ben's Old Fort was a place for commerce. So this is the trading room. This is where all the deals happen. Mountain men could bring in their furs and tribes would bring in buffalo hides. Now, if I brought my beaver in here, I can get $3. You could trade furs for goods. So in this room, this is where they would store all the hides, all different types of animals. The kitty loves it. This is quite the museum where nothing is behind glass. So you can smell the fire, you can hear some kind of noises back there. I wonder what's going on. This is the blacksmith shop. So this is where you would go to fix your wagon, come and do a pit stop, get some tools. So the blacksmith was considered to have magical powers. He can control wind, fire, earth, and water. It's so cool to watch him work. All right, let's check out what's upstairs. So this is one of the bastions, there are two of them. You know what's interesting is that, so Ben's old fort was never attacked, so they never had to use these gun ports for protection. So this was a meeting place for many cultures and also a peaceful one. Onward. But peace wasn't always present here on the plains. I learned about a tragic event that changed the Great Plains forever. The Sand Creek Massacre is not one of the happy, feel-good stories in American history. But those darker parts are sometimes just as important. If you acknowledge those things that have happened in the past, you can learn from them. You start off here with two letters written by two men who refused to fire during the massacre. What a terrible thing to experience. All right, I'm just beginning the walk, a short half mile trail up to Monument Hill. Up there you can see the overlook and listen in on an interpretive program. Just behind me is where the Cheyenne and Arapaho camp would have been in 1864. In that camp, there were about 750 people of the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes. So this was supposed to be a place of peace. Over the course of the day, the soldiers here killed about 230 people, most of them women, children, and the elderly. For some people who visit, this is kind of a barren place. But for others, this is a place that they could call home. This is a place where their ancestors are, a place of memory, a place to reflect. Pretty powerful. In the events that led up to the Sand Creek Massacre, the emotions the people out here felt, fear, anger, prejudice, these are things that people still feel today, which makes this place and this event in history all the more important. With blue skies ahead, I'm on the road less traveled to explore the Comanche National Grassland. Let's do this. Today I'm headed to Piawara Canyon on a little auto tour, but I kind of love that we get to drive our own cars for this. We start on the highway, and then we head down this dirt road. It's about an hour to get there. And it's BYO four-wheel drive. Ooh, my car's getting dirty. Now the guided Saturday auto tour is the only way to access this road, but there's a trail for hikers, bikers, and horseback riders. It's kind of fun to explore places where not many people get to go. So we're headed now to see the main site, the dino tracks. Say hello to the largest dino track site in North America. 
There's 2,000 dino tracks down here. I just arrived to Dinosaur Lake and there are real dinosaur footprints here and they are ginormous. So these dinosaur tracks are found in limestone and there's three layers of limestone and it's kind of like a sandwich. This is so cool. So this is the footprint of a theropod and it was about 18 feet tall. Just a tad taller than me. Let's go look at some sauropods. Well, you can actually see how they're moving all in one direction. So you can actually tell the movement patterns of the dinos. Whoa, that one's giant. And what's cool is you can see big ones and little ones. So it's clear a mom and a baby sauropod are walking in tandem, kind of like elephants do. This right here, this real smoothed out groove, that, that's a tail print. Instead of a dinosaur footprint, that's a dinosaur tail print. These tracks have been here 150 million years. And they're still uncovering dino tracks. Pretty cool, huh? There's all kinds of cool discoveries back here. Speaking of discoveries, nearby, little known Vogel Canyon is calling. These walls are home to Native American rock art and more. Shall we? There are four trails to choose from with stone posts to guide the way. I'll explore the canyon bottom and the mesa top and keep my eyes out for prickly things. There's cacti, so many different types of cacti. I hear the sound of grass swaying in the wind, and that's it. <gasps> oh my God. Okay, I just saw a tarantula. Um, so if you come at certain times of the year, the tarantulas, they're migrating, and I'm told they're not gonna harm anybody, but they are terrifying to spot by surprise. I got my eyes on you, dude. Ah, we found the overlook. It's a lot different scenery than it was just a few minutes ago. A little snack and some water. Ooh, a sandwich and a cookie. Time for some more hiking. In the 1870s, this area was part of the Barlow Sanderstone Stage Route, a spur of the Santa Fe Trail. But there have been many layers of life in this canyon. So up here, there's supposed to be some rock art. For thousands of years, people have left messages on these walls. Native American petroglyphs decorate the sandstone cliffs. Of course, they ask you don't write on the wall and don't touch, but it's totally okay to take pictures. I found a little spring, a little watering hole. This oasis was a lifeline for Santa Fe Trail travelers and wildlife. Who knows what else is here to discover in the canyons and plains of Southeast Colorado. I guess you'll have to just come by and see for yourself.